ego driven, no, eccentric, possibly. Um, the, the reason I'm a chairman um, is because I wanted to I wanted to create a football academy originally um, that gave players a pathway into some kind of first team and gave them the best education in football. But um, the way that football, professional football academies are structured at the moment, they take kids out of their grassroots section, don't allow them to stay with their friends, that kind of thing. Um, well, our academies complete opposite to that, but they get just as good at coaching and facilities, hopefully, um, or they will do next season. Um, the reason why we brought Phil Smith into the club is because um, he's very, very good at all of the football business side and all of the meeting and greeting and doing all the corporate side. That's not me. Um, I'm a football fan. Um, Emma and Lee are both football fans. James, Dawn, Lee are all football fans and we want to be fans on the day, sat outside there with all the guys cheering the team on. I scream and I shout and I swear and um, I, I want that to be um, me. I don't want to change just because I'm a football chairman. Um, but me and Phil together can, can drive everything forward. So eccentric, possibly, um, but um, a typical football chairman, absolutely not. Everybody knows, and all the players know, Adam Priestley is my favourite player, I think he's fantastic. Um, and I think, in my opinion, um, he's, he's probably one of the only players that I've seen at this level who can run with the ball at his feet, at pace, in a really strong manner. You just can't knock him off ball and being a striker myself when I was playing, that, that was exactly the kind of player I was. So, um, I'm looking forward to seeing a fit Tom Corner. Uh, when we got Tom through last season, he weren't he weren't fit. Uh, he says that he weren't fit himself. Um, this season, seeing a fit Tom Corner is going to be um, a great thing to see. Um, and Stocky and Chippy and people like that. I'm looking forward to seeing the players who come over from Osset Town as well. Do you know? Corey Gregory the other night was fantastic in my opinion. It looked like the finished article where midfielders are concerned. Um, and Yates and Lee Overton and Nelly and um, there's a few others that, that I'm looking forward to seeing week in, week out. Uh, Sheffield, the, I'm Sheffield born and bred, so going with my team back to my hometown team and giving them a good idea. They'll be I'm right up my street. Um, <laughs> to, to be honest, Dad. Um, Sheffield Club, I'd love that. Stockbridge Park Steels, I used to come watch my friends play there. Um, so for, for me, those clubs are, are going to be a special game. Um, and we've got obviously the Clean Forks game and all that kind of stuff. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that the league's split from north south to uh, east west. Um, I know a lot of people aren't overly enamoured with that, but I, I don't think it's a bad thing. I think that um, a lot of teams in the North West um, are going to benefit from it because there's a lot kind of closer games for them. And we've probably got more travelling to, to Newcastle, places like that, Morpeth. Um, but it's all adds to the excitement of being in university football, it's, it's what we do. What's happening here is we're building something for the whole community of Wakefield. Um, I know at the moment we're Osset United, not at the moment, I know we are Osset United, um, and we'll always be Osset United, but what's happening is we're trying to build a sustainable football club that can still be here in a hundred years time. Um, this is not going to be a millionaire's toy, um, it's not going to be something while ever I'm here and I'm interested it's fantastic and then as soon as we lose interest that saved we up sticks we go and the club's left in ruins um, this will be and I'm sure someday uh, the fans will want me out or I'll want to leave and spend more time with my family um, because it does consume a lot of your time more than I ever expected um, but even when and if I decide enough's enough this carries on for another hundred years past me
You need to academy is what everything is structured around. Um, it's, it's an academy that, that benefits grassroots. So um, every single player who plays in Unita Academy plays for their Sunday side on a Sunday um, with their friends. And that's the whole emphasis of why we set it up. Um, but they get a UA for A or a UA for B qualified coach showing them how the game should be played. And for me, um, it's the way that football and academies should be run. So our players are going to get an opportunity to play in our first team if they're good enough. Um, for instance, one of the things that I really loathe about football at the minute is we would pay 50, 60, 70 million pounds for a, an Anthony Martial from, from some club in France and he's an unproven entity. When Marcus Rashford sat there and the subs and he's free, you know, give the boy a chance and that's what we'll be doing. And that's why we set up uh, Unique to Academy. Zero. Team selection, nothing to do with it. Um, Andy Welsh and uh, Paul Quinn know 100% that this is their decision. Who we bring into the club is their decision. Um, how much we pay them is mine and Phil Smith's decision. And um, apart from that, I don't have anything to do with, with the football side uh, because football is football and we all know that at some point if we go on a run of 10 losing games, I'm going to have to speak to a manager and say, right, come on, you know, what's happening? Um, I can't have that conversation if I've helped him pick his team. Um, so the answer to that is zero. To, the honest answer is I'd love to, um, but um, I'll be happy with playoffs. I'll be happy with anything above tenth place. You know, I think I think when you're a new club and everybody's calling a super club and all that kind of stuff. You know, um, we're two clubs that's amalgamated into one. One finished something like fifteenth, one finished sixteenth in the league last year. So um, obviously everybody's excited about what's happening here at Osset, and um, I'm really bothered about the infrastructure and what's going in behind the footballers. Um, the football on the pitch is not the be all and end all of what we're doing here. Um, so if we have a successful season this season, fantastic. Next season watch out. Um, there's three arms to our business. There's a specialist cleaning arm which cleans up food manufacturing sites on a, on a big scale, so Morrison's are our biggest client there. Um, we clean over a million square metres per week of, of food factories. Um, then we've got a maintenance and a reactive arm that um, we've got handymen, we've got electricians, plumbers, joiners, plasterers, roofers, floorers. Um, they do all the Pizza Express restaurants and uh, Manheim car auctions, we do all that kind of stuff and then we've got a specialist project company that's an M&E site. Yeah, massively. Um, I think I've only heard two or three people that haven't really been behind it, and I, I understand why they're not. You know, but as far as I'm concerned, the question that I was asked most when I took over at Albion was, why are the two teams in Osset when it's such a small town? There's 22,000 people in Osset. Um, I can drive down the street in Osset, but before I was chairman of any football club and I'd know three or four or five people, I'd be like, "Hi, mate, you're right." You know. Nowadays, everybody's behind it. Do you know this? This could be, this could be absolutely fantastic. And um, whether we win, lose, or draw on the pitch, everybody in Aussie is going to feel it.